Good evening and welcome to MI class. Thank you for bearing with us, even though we are starting behind time, but we are sure we are going to do something today. Okay, um, the last time we had uh, MI class, which is yesterday, we had um, part one of our process costing account. Here in part one, we did um, process costing with losses. And we saw the normal loss, how we account for normal loss when there is a recoverable value and how we account for normal loss when there is a non-recoverable value. Then we got to see that uh, normal losses are inevitable. We expect it. And so it's either we look for recoverable value or we don't recover it. Okay, now we look for abnormal losses. We said abnormal losses are those losses that are above the normal level. We do not expect it. And so we value abnormal loss with the cost of good output. We now talked about abnormal gain. Abnormal gain is treated like abnormal loss, the same valuation with the good output. But the difference is abnormal gain is put on the debit side of the process account. Then we want to talk about process costing with work in progress, which forms part two. Although we started it yesterday with closing work in progress, we want to repeat it again here so that it will sink down process costing with work in progress, closing work in progress. Now, when there is a closing work in progress, what does it mean? It means that there are some production that we have started in this period. By the end of the period, they were not completed. It means that they may be 100% complete in material, but partially complete in labor and overhead, or just say partially complete in conversion. So what do we do? We use the idea of equivalent units. So by using equivalent units, we are using the percentage of completion to check how many of these incomplete processes is equal to one complete process? Then we decide that normally when we are doing without work in progress, we usually say our total process costs divided by, um, by the number of expected outputs. Of course, these are finished completed outputs will give us the cost of one uh, unit, which is the cost we use in uh, valuing the good product and the abnormal losses. But now because we have partially completed items, partially completed in terms of maybe labor, in terms of um, work, um, overhead, it seemed to present an issue. And so there's a need for us to do them separately. We need to do that of material, do that of labor, then you combine them together, their units cost, their equivalent, they are cost by equivalent units. You combine them together to form what will be used to value one complete unit. Now we took at, look at one example here. So I will take my time as much as possible to explain this again. 
the following information relates to production process X. The input quantities are 4,000 units. Now out of these 4,000 units, 3,500 were completed. And so that gives us 500 units not completed. We call it work in progress. All the direct materials are added at the beginning of the process. So when we introduce the 4,000 units, we added all the materials we need to add as at the start of the process. So if there are three processes, so at process one, we had put all the materials there. That means the material is 100% complete. When we are looking at the working uh, closing work in progress, since all the materials have been added, that 500 unit had 100% complete materials. But when we look at conversion, it's only 40% complete. So what do we do? Now look at the cost incurred in the period. Now this cost incurred, this 24,000 was the cost of the materials that was used. This 4,000 units, the material involved here cost us 24,000. Then the conversion cost to convert the material down to finished goods and a work in progress, it cost us 7,000. Statement of equipment unit and a process work in progress account. So what do we do, okay? Now, the first thing to do is to look for our equivalent units. We start by getting those units. So we are saying out of the 4,000 direct inputs you make, 3,500 we are completely done, finished. And when everything is finished, it means 100% material is there, 100% labor is there. It means one finished product is equal to one equivalent unit of direct material, one equivalent unit in conversion. It means the 3,000 finished output is same 3,000 units for material, 3, sorry, 3,500 for material, 3,500 for labor or for conversion. No problem about that. When it comes to, con uh, to closing work in progress, we had 500 that has not been fully worked on. But what is the percentage of materials that have been used here? 100%. So 500 work in progress, you see 500 materials. So all you need to do is say 500 times one is 500. All right? Conversion is 40%. And so 500 work in progress for conversion, you multiply by 0 0.4 will give you 200. And so when you check equivalent unit for materials, we have 4,000. So everything is corresponding 4,000. But for labor and conversion, it is 37. What it means is that 4,000 total units is equivalent to 3,700 units of conversion where the 500 is 40% complete. Okay, now we go to how much did we spend? Total cost of material, we are told that material cost, let me get the question here again. Material cost is 2,400. So you can see it here, 24,000, rather 24,000. So that's what's here. So if we had 24,000 materials and we were able to get equivalent units of 4,000, it means that the cost by equivalent unit is six Naira. So it means that six Naira by equivalent unit is what we spent, is 
what we incur. The same thing for conversion. It was seven four that was spent so far and divided by 3,007 will give you two. So that's what we are going to be using. This is like a weighted average. This is what we call the weighted average method. So for closing, closing work in progress, we use the weighted average method. So it means that everything have the same weight. The cost of finished goods has the same weight as the cost of closing work in progress. Now it has the same weight in the sense that finished goods has elements of material and elements of conversion. So if we add these two conversion and material, multiply by three five, we get 28,000. Now, when it gets to the closing work in progress, because all these are of different percentages, so you take each cost element separately. Material is six naira times 500 units. So you see there are different units, 500 units and six naira, 3,000. For conversion, you see it's 200 units, 200 units multiplied by two, it gives you 400. So everything gives you 3,400. So that is what your conversion cost, your closing work in progress will be. The fish goods 28,000, conversion is 34. And that is what we see here. 28,000 is here for finished goods, 34 for conversion. When you check, the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. This is the cost of direct materials used in the process. This is the conversion cost used in the process. Now, that is for closing work in progress. We said it is weighted average method. Now, when we go to opening work in progress, there is to the next period to complete. All right, the opening work in progress, we said the issue here is we want to know if we are going to treat the opening work in progress in the same way we are going to treat them together with what we did for the period, or we are going to treat them separately. So mind you, we had incomplete activity from last period and so look at all the things we are going to be doing this period one we are going to be 
completing what we started last period. That's one. We are also going to start some things this period and end them this period. And three, we are going to start certain things this period and we will likely have to treat opening work in progress. The first one is the weighted average method, which you are familiar with. And the second method is the first in, first out method. Now, take my time and explain these things to you. Now, in the opening work in progress weighted average method, in the opening work in Progress weighted average method. The assumption is that all units produce units of closing work in value at the serials and the same cost by equivalent unit for conversion. We are used to this method. The only difference between what we did for closing work in progress and the opening and what we are doing now for opening work in progress is when we are considering the process. Best cost. In the closing work in progress, when there is no opening work in progress, we said the process cost is the cost of material. Now the, we have a working open, the opening work in progress. And let's see how this is being done. Okay, look at this question here. We have opening inventory of 3,000 units. And now this is material cost in the opening work in progress. That is the opening work in progress three thousand units. They said the material is hundred percent. 12,600 as to this new period. For labor, or the end of last period, which we are bringing to this period. Now, during the month, we now added 7,000 units. These are added material. Or these are, yeah, fresh new materials we added. Then, we now completed, that is, we have vested 8,000 units. Okay? Then the closing work in progress complete for direct materials, all we are added at the beginning of the process. So it was sent complete for conversion, and we are told it's 2000. Now we are said that closing inventory of 500 units is there for 100% complete for materials but only 60 percent complete for conversion now look at the total cost that we are incurred in the period this was the cost of making the eight thousand units okay of making the ten thousand units of making ten thousand units which is twenty eight thousand and 17,430. How do we know that that's the cost of making 10,000 units? We had completed output of 8,000 and incomplete of 2,000. That's 10,000. Or we could say we have 3,000 that we have not finished, which we are going to finish 
plus 7,000 that we introduced, that's 10,000. Okay, how do we prepare the process account? First of all, we start with our equivalent unit. When we are doing equivalent units, you are doing closing equivalent unit. It means that we had finished goods, finished output, 8,000. When we have 8,000, how many percent is it complete for material? 100% and 100% complete for conversion. So when you say finished goods, the materials you need to put here will be the same for labor, for materials. Now the issue is in closing work in progress. We are told it's 2,000 units, 100% complete in materials, 2,000. 60% complete in materials, one. This is what we have been doing since the closing work in progress. Now we have something we've been doing. Eyes. Previously, we would have just said cost incurred in the period 28,000 and But now we are adding the opening work in progress cost that we incurred from last period. We are bringing it in as cost of this new period. So when we add them up, yeah, this gives us 46. This here gives us 80. So it means that the total cost you in that is total cost of the cost 28,000 to complete what you started last period, but also complete what you started this period, and part of them went on work in progress. You now have equivalent cost by equivalent unit is 4.06 and 2. So what do you do? You use this figure to value everything. So what do you do now? Cost of finished goods is this for material, this for labor, you add them together, 8480, no doubt about that. You come to closing work in progress, you say 2000 materials times material cost by equivalent unit, give you 8120. Conversion, give you 24. This gives you 10,520. So you see, you bring your opening work in progress, bring that 3,000 units that we are giving and bring the cost. The 3,000, the 3,000 units. Had a cost of um, 126 plus 570, which is this. Now, what you put in the period was 7,000 material and labor. They gave you 28 for material and 17 for 30 for conversion. So you see them here material and conversion. Then your finished goods. 8,000, and look at how you valued them, 48,480. Then your closing work in progress is 2,000. This is how you valued them. That summarizes your work in progress. Now, summary for work in progress method. Um, Weighted average method. All outputs, that's finished goods and closing work in progress, are valued at the same equivalent unit. The opening, the cost of the opening 
ventry plus the cost incurred in the period will give you the total of closing inventory to the total equivalent unit. Okay. Now, if you look at cost per equivalent unit, cost per equivalent unit is simply your total cost divided by your total equivalent unit. So look at the diagram here. This is your opening inventory. This is the cost of opening work in progress. This for material, this for conversion. This is the cost incurred in the period for material, cost incurred in the period for labor. You add it to get total cost incurred in the period. Now, what about the output? You look for the credit side. What is the equivalent? What is the number of outputs, finished goods? You bring them here. Then, what is the equivalent unit of the closing work in progress? You bring them, you add them up together, and you have your. Total equivalent units for each of the elements. So you simply say the cost valuation divided by the equivalent unit. FIFO method, the FIFO, it is based on the assumption that the opening work in progress will be the first thing you're going to do this month. So you have to complete it first before you do anything. That would mean that any completed unit would have completed the work in progress started this period and engage the number of equivalent units of bit of work that you've done in the period will be this. One, you need to find how much you need to complete what you started. So because you are going to complete what you started last period in this period, we need to find the equivalent unit to be completed this period. Last one. We also need to find equivalent unit of what you see in this period. That's not it. The next thing to do is to look for the equivalent unit of closing inventory which will compute the normal way in which we've done. Now, look at the completed finished goods. For you to know how many we have done this period that are fresh from what you did, what you completed from last period, simply say total completed units minus Opening in work in progress. That will give you what you now. The, the thing to do here is to, to take note of the difference between people and weighted average. Opening inventory is 3,000. That is opening work in progress is 3,000. Material is 12,600. 100% complete. Conversion is 970, just 30% complete. What does that tell you? It
means that for you to work on this new, this opening work in progress in this new period, you don't have to But what you need in conversion is 70%. 70% conversion. During the month, you imputed 7,000 units. That makes it 10,000. But what you have vested is 8,000 completed. It means inside this 8,000 that is harvested, you must have completed this 3,000 first. Then 5,000 would have started in this period and completed. That is the 8,000. So this is a cumulative figure. So that 8,000 consists of the 3,000 you started this period and 5,000 you started fresh and completed. Then we have 2,000 uncompleted in this period, which are 100% complete. Excuse me? 100% complete for materials and 60% complete for conversion. What do you do? Now, all direct materials are added to the production at the beginning of the process. Closing inventory of 500 units is 100% complete for materials only 60% complete for conversion. As always before, our cost incurred in the period is 28,000 and 17,430 for materials and conversion respectively. Now, prepare the process work in process capital and account. Now look at what we do. We start with output. What is our, normally we usually say finish goods output, isn't it? Like when we did here, yeah. let me open the, the um, weighted average method. Let me say the weighted average method. Now, can you see here that in the weighted average method, you brought the whole 8,000 first and you say it's 100% complete, right? But in the people units, but you have an opening work in progress. So what we said is the opening work in progress was started in last period. And how many materials do you need to use this period to complete this 3,000? Nothing. Zero percent. And so that's new. How many conversion do we need to complete? 70%. So 3,000 times 0 0.7 is 2,100. So we need 2,100 equivalent units to complete what we started. Then 5,000 out of the 8,000 was started this period and complete with 100%. So we say 5,000 that would mean that the finished product of 8,000, it means we did it use 5,000 in this period. Version is 7,000 just done, which consists of what it is and what we did work in progress. And we do it, the closing work in progress, we do it the same normal way. We have 2,000 that is yet to be completed, 100% complete in material, 60% complete in conversion. We do it the normal way and we get a
1,000 and 1,200. So the thing to note here is that finished goods is split one weighted average metal. People bringing in from this period, three material and labor to complete it this period. Material is nothing, uh, conversion is 70%, 2,100. And you said you have 8,000 completed. That would mean that 5,000 was started in this period, 100% completing material, 100% completing labor, no problem. So you Closing work in progress is done the normal way. How many percent complete conversion? 60 percent. That's 7,000 equivalent units of direct materials, 8,300 units of equivalent labor. Now, total cost incurred in the period. Now, in the case of um, In the case of um, one, did you see that we added the opening cost of work in progress at the beginning? and we now added it to the period. But now we are doing the opposite for expense. So we are not talking about this. We didn't spend the opening. The difference lies here in how did we treat closing work? How did we treat equivalent units? It's different. And how we treat the cost here is different. Here we use the 28,000 and the 17,430. So we are not even bringing the opening work in progress. Then we are now bringing these units to divide and we get four and 2.1. So what it means is this, cost of finished goods in the period is 8,000 units. But what you started, what you started from last period was 3,000 units. And for 3,000 units, you have already spent how much? We have already spent 15,570 from the question. It's what you've already spent on the 3,000 units for last period. You have already spent it for last period. Okay, now after already spending the progress. Now, you know it's not complete. How much do you need to complete it? You said we need just conversion of 2,100 valued at 2.1 to complete that work in progress. That gives you 4,410. Add them up, you have 17,980. So it means that your work in progress alone, if complete, because you have to complete it in this period. When it was not complete, it was that. You have to spend 4,100 in conversion. Cost these 3,000 units, we have on 980. Then, what we started at material and labor 100 started this period, ended this period. And so, our finished goods will be worth 4848. This finished goods of 8,000 consists of 3,000 now complete, which is 17,980 plus 5,000 completed, which gives you 4848. Then we go to the 
work in progress. And we are saying that 2,000 materials equivalent unit for Naira, 8,000 Naira. Conversion. 1,200 units at 2,1 gives you 2,520. When you add them together, you have 10,520. The processor and units, they were incomplete here, and you spent this 7,000 new materials. It's the conversion cost of this 7,000 units. And when you harvested your finished goods, it was 8,000, which of course would have included 3,000, which you started last period. And what it takes you to convert it is involved in this cost. 5,000 units out of the remaining 7,000, we are finished. in this period. Okay. That means the cost of starting it and finishing it, the cost of doing the whole matter of finishing this, so the cost of 3,080 contains this 3,000, this 13,570 inside here, contains it plus the remaining conversion cost to complete it is all here. That is what makes it the 3,000. Then 5,000, which you completed and started and completed this year or this month, is inside here. As you can see from here. This is the complete its cost. Okay. Progress at the beginning. Which includes the cost from last period plus what is needed closing work in progress that is done. Mary here is um you need to know your period. This is your total cost in for work in progress one method one method you need to bring the opening work in progress cost plus the cost incurred in the period that gives you total cost for in people method just the cost incurred in the period will be your total cost but your equivalent unit will be one what you started this from last to complete that. What and what you started this period, last period, and could not finish. What you started period, and you finished, you started this period, did the dish good output, and what's the difference? The difference helps you a lot to know how to value your cost by equivalent unit in the current period. So far, so good. We've talked about opening work in progress and uh, closing work in progress. So if you look at it, summary of everything here, look at the opening work in progress, the cost of it, plus the cost of finishing the work in progress. So this is the incomplete cost 
you brought in. This is the cost you took to finish it and look at the, the cost to complete all the cost. This is material, this is conversion cost. So this is the total cost of work in progress for it to become finished. Then look at the ones you started this period and you ended this period, this is the cost. You add these two costs, this is the total cost of finished product. Then you go to work in progress ending. Material cost of it and the other conversion cost of it. You add them together, you have this. And so your total process cost will be the cost of finishing what you started. This is cost of finished product plus cost of work in progress. Okay, so let's not talk too much. I want you to go and practice this opening and closing so that when we schedule another class again, hopefully, if we will have time, Friday, we will have time on Friday. If there's any free time, we may want to do that. But if there is no free time, we'll take it to the next uh, next class next week. But look at it here now. We'll be looking at losses. And what and buy product, then that will be all. And if you have time, you go to batch costing and fund. If you have time, you will do all of that. So thank you so much for the patience, for coming to class, and for enduring the network. I'll see you again in the next class, where we'll be talking about work in progress with the uh, losses. So until then, thank you so much. And see you in the next class. Good night.